The vice presidential debate took place, and I know immediately who won as soon as it was over. The fly. Bias against minorities is, is a great insult to the men and women who serve in law enforcement. And I want everyone to know who puts on the uniform of law enforcement every day that President Trump and I stand with you. And it is remarkable that... <laughs> <laughs> Now, while we're zoomed in on Mike Pence, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that his eye is a little bit more red than usual. Now, some people were tweeting that COVID-19, actually one of the symptoms is pink eye. I don't know if that's true, but what I do know is that it was a little bit weird just for optics purposes. I know that he can't control this, but it made him look more evil um, than <laughs> I think he wanted to appear. Uh, so overall, let's let's go ahead and get to some substance. This debate was largely forgettable. It was more watchable, infinitely more watchable than the first presidential debate. But I think largely it was forgettable and it's not going to change the trajectory of this race. Now, going into this debate, Mike Pence needed a really breakout performance. He did not get that. And I think overall, you know, if you compare both of their performances Kamala Harris definitely won to me. Now, this isn't necessarily a blowout win. I think that she won, but it wasn't necessarily her best performance ever. I think that her performance at, the, at that first Democratic debate, that was the best debate performance that she's ever given. At this debate, you can tell that she came prepared. She brought her A-game, but I think that there were a couple of moments where, you know, she missed opportunities to really, you know, put Mike Pence on the offensive and you know it, it really was frustrating to watch this now coming into this she really came out swinging and she took shots at mike pence and donald trump for their incompetence and mishandling COVID 19 and she had the perfect quips to respond to him when he said look you guys want to mandate everything such as masks why don't we trust the american people she responded by saying uh, why don't we trust the american people by telling them the truth then citing the fact that this administration lied about the severity of COVID-19 when they knew back in January that was a really strong point um Mike Pence in an attempt to defend himself thought it was a good idea to bring up swine flu which did not affect as many people in the way that COVID is affecting people I mean Trump did this too I don't know why they think this is a good idea because Obama handled that competently you can say it was severe but the economy didn't crash as a result of swine flu. 210,000 Americans did not die as a result of swine flu. So every time they bring up swine flu as a gotcha on Joe Biden and Obama, it reminds everyone that Obama and Biden are much more competent than they are. So I don't know what they're thinking in bringing this up. Now, in a way to kind of pivot and divert attention away from him and Donald Trump, he brought up the fact that their... COVID-19 action plan looks similar to theirs. And then he attacked Joe Biden for plagiarism. Come on, man. And he's correct that plagiarism has previously ended Joe Biden's presidential runs. However, you're bringing this up in the context of COVID-19 and your failure, which resulted in hundreds of thousands of deaths. He really needed to find some way to project some level of competence because Donald Trump has failed on every single front. And he just... He needed to reassure the American people that there's at least one grown-up in this administration that's going to take responsibility and has a plan of action. He did not do that. And for that reason alone, even if Kamala's performance wasn't great, I think that Mike Pence lost this debate. Now, I will say he is a better debater than Donald Trump. I don't think that he turned off as many people as Donald Trump did, but I will say maybe it's the case that people liked Mike Pence's performance if they're traditionally conservative, but they're turned off by Donald Trump's belligerence and his antics, maybe. But he came off as so fake and smarmy that I, I don't know how this is going to sit well with people. This is a little bit more subjective. So, you know, I could be imposing my own bias here in this situation. But to me, it was it was really, really difficult to listen to him. He was completely insufferable. And there were, were a few moments where he was let off the hook when he shouldn't have been, both by the moderator and Kamala Harris. So first of all, uh, let's be clear, he did not state that he believes in man-made climate change. He denied anthropogenic climate change. He said, look, the climate is changing. And then he went on to espouse more right-wing talking points. In 2020, after we just witnessed wildfires 
sweep the West Coast. You are going to deny climate change. I mean, you just are tone deaf and you don't know how to read the room. You're too far in that right wing bubble. On top of that, towards the end of, uh, of the debate, and we're going to talk about this in a separate segment. I don't know if you missed it, but when he was asked whether or not he would uh, commit to a peaceful transfer of power or what he would do if Trump didn't commit to a peaceful transfer of power, rather, um, he did not answer the question. He talked about how, oh, well, for the last couple of years, Democrats didn't want to accept the results of the election. Yeah, but that's a little bit different. Hillary Clinton being bitter and ins insufferable, that's different. You know, the, her blaming everyone is different than an incumbent president refusing to step down when they have power. That's a very different situation. He didn't answer that question. And while we're on the subject of Mike Pence not answering questions, I can't recall a time where he answered a single question. Like, every single question he dodged. And it was so slimy and obvious that I was screaming at my TV, hoping that Kamala Harris would call him out for it. Uh, and it was a missed opportunity when he brought up court packing and he tried to get her to give a direct answer and she fumbled right there. She fumbled and she fumbled badly and it was not a very good look. Um, the problem with her answer there is that you can tell that she was very conspicuously trying to dodge the question and when she dodges questions she doesn't do it as artfully as mike pence you know you can see that she's floundering and she's trying to come up with something to say whereas mike pence already has his dodges and answers the questions predetermined so it's a little bit more obvious and he kind of pressed her on this and it made it seem as if she wouldn't answer the question now that is just one instance where kamala harris explicitly avoided answering a question but compare that to mike pence he answered Basically no questions. So at that point going forward, I really wanted Kamala Harris to point out he didn't answer the question. You don't have to interrupt him to do that. But when you get your time to speak, you can say he didn't answer the question, America. I hope you're paying attention. He did not give you a clear answer because that's something that needs to be addressed because the average viewer who's just kind of watching, uh, listening in the background, maybe they're not going to really uh, consciously acknowledge that. It may be subconscious. So you want that to be at the forefront of their minds, that this guy is a weasel if they can't already see it for themselves. You want to point that out, make it easy for them, connect the dots for them. Um, So that was a missed opportunity, although Kamala Harris was decisive. She seemed like she was a grown-up. On top of that, when Mike Pence attempted to interrupt her, you know, she shut him down. And that was really great because if there's anything that Americans like, it is strength. It is someone who is not afraid to stand up to another individual. I think that's going to play well for her. And honestly, all of the facial reactions that she was making, I think that was a good look because like I was making those same facial reactions because the things that Mike Pence were saying were deeply unpopular, deeply unpopular. And yet somehow the debate was still taking place on his terms, on right wing terms, when this is a far right individual, like he's talking about how extreme the Democrats are and how liberal Kamala Harris is. He even said that she's more liberal than Bernie Sanders, which is a joke. But why are we allowing the debate to take place on the terms of this right-wing ghoul? When he brings up that you want to ban fracking, don't just repeat, oh, no, of course, Joe would never want to ban fracking. We know that that's the policy, and he doesn't support banning fracking. His policy is basically we're going to rein it in somewhat and not grant as many permits to frackers, but it's still not great. So, like, you don't want to lean into something that's unpopular. And she even tweeted out on Twitter, her campaign team said, we will not ban fracking. Stop running away from things like this. Now, this brings me to uh, my biggest gripe with Kamala Harris. It was when she tried to walk a fine line between centrism and, uh, you know, trying not to turn off the left wing supporters that are reluctantly supporting Joe Biden. Now, if you watched my pre-debate preview, I brought up a situation wherein Kamala Harris could have face planted. So my, you know, what came to mind when I was bringing this up was Medicare for all, because I was expecting my Pence to bring up Medicare for all and say, well, look, you support socialized medicine. And then when she says no, he can then point out that she supported it in the primaries and her and Joe Biden actually went at it in the primaries over their disagreement when it comes to Medicare for all. Now, we know that she doesn't support Medicare for all, but what I said was that her strategy should be to either, you know, uh, swipe that aside and just attack, go on the offensive and say, 
your administration supports a lawsuit that would overturn the Affordable Care Act, which means that millions of people will lose protections uh, currently if they have pre-existing conditions, or she can not run away from it. She can say, look, I don't necessarily support Bernie's iteration of Medicare for All, but I do support moving towards a universal health care system. And this is a genuine disagreement between me and Joe Biden. But this is something that we're willing to debate. It seems like the American people is on our side. So we're going to work it out. Um, now, that didn't happen. The Medicare for All disaster scenario did not come to fruition, although a similar situation came up. And uh, it basically played out exactly as I expected the Medicare for All situation to play out. The Green New Deal. This was bad. So uh, Mike Pence brought up how she supports the Green New Deal. In fact, she was one of the first co-sponsors in the Senate to support the Green New Deal. And um, she ran away from it. Now, she didn't handle it as poorly as I feared, but it still wasn't a good look because climate change is a very serious issue. And the Green New Deal is a very popular policy. So when you are debating someone who doesn't even believe that anthropogenic climate change is a thing, you in no way have to grant him anything in this conversation. You do not have to debate on his terms. He is false on every single level when it comes to the issue of climate change. And so the only thing that you need to do when it comes to climate change is shame Mike Pence for not even believing in climate change, for not believing the science. But I mean, she kind of ran away from, you know, the popular thing, which is what I expected, but it's still disappointing. However, you know, even having said that, I don't want to make it seem as if my overall impression of Kamala Harris was negative because I think she performed really well. I think she did a good job at really holding her ground and Mike Pence kind of talked himself into a corner on numerous occasions and fell into the same traps that Trump did, even if he did successfully lay some right-wing traps for Kamala Harris that she walked right into. I mean, he himself, you know, he dug a hole for himself. So literally on a national debate stage claimed that systemic racism is not a thing. And he attacked Kamala Harris and Joe Biden for saying that systemic racism is real. But what does he do minutes later? He disproves his own argument by saying, well, when you were attorney general in California, black Americans were disproportionately locked up for low-level drug crimes. What do we call that, Mike Pence? What do we call a system that disproportionately targets one group of people? So he does this and he looks foolish. And I mean, if you do... Uh, one thing, uh, you say one thing at the beginning of the debate and then you contradict yourself towards the end of the debate, that may not be as bad, but it stings when you contradict yourself within like five minutes. And Donald Trump did the same thing. You know, he shamed Joe Biden for the 1994 crime bill, which suggests that he's too tough on crime. And then minutes later, he's saying, you won't even say the words law and order. So which is it? Is he too tough on crime or not tough enough on crime. And this is a problem with the Trump administration. They attack Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and end up inadvertently taking different sides on the same issue and it makes them look foolish. And furthermore, when Mike Pence was asked about whether or not justice was served in the Breonna Taylor case, that long pause right there, it felt like it was an eternity before he basically said, um, yes, I trust our justice system. No, that is not a good answer because Trump has not showed even a modicum of sympathy for the Black Lives Matter movement. And when you have a majority of Americans, according to one poll, say that protesters were justified in burning down a Minneapolis police station, if you want to win, you've got to at least show that you have a little bit of a clue. And Mike Pence didn't even answer an easy question right. So he pivots away from the Breonna Taylor question and he goes into rioting and looting. You were asked about Breonna Taylor and you talk about rioting and looting. So what you just admitted to the American people unwittingly is that violence against inanimate objects, private property, is more egregious to you than violence against black people. Now you know why you are struggling with the black vote. Because of things like this. You have 
not a single clue, and you're unwilling to listen. You condemn, 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 but you never ask why people are in the streets, why they're protesting. Maybe it's the case that they have legitimate grievances that you are refusing to address. So overall, I think that Kamala Harris won this debate. Was it a blowout? No, not necessarily. But, you know, comparing this to the first presidential debate, I think that her victory was more clear than Joe Biden's victory because I don't necessarily believe that Joe Biden had a good performance at that debate, but I think that Trump ended up losing that debate on his own because he wouldn't shut up and he ended up turning a lot of people off. And in this instance, I think that Kamala Harris actually put in work and she won that debate. Now, a lot of people widely believed that Mike Pence beat Tim Kaine in the 2016 debate, but this time... I just, I don't see it. I will say that Mike Pence is probably more skilled than other Republicans at debating. Uh, if you take into account the tactics that he uses to get someone on the offensive, like the moment when he basically got Kamala Harris to fumble when it comes to answering the question as to whether or not they'd pack the court, that was a good tactical move. However, just him refusing to answer any questions, his overall demeanor and smugness, the style. I don't know if what he's offering is going to resonate with people. I just don't. And by the way, I think that when it comes to court packing, we should definitely pack the court because we don't have a choice. We can't be going backwards in history and refighting these battles that we already won. Uh, but I don't, I don't know strategically if it would behoove Kamala Harris to admit this, that they want to pack the court, because on one hand, and David Packman made this point, he says that, you know, if Joe Biden says we're not going to pack the Supreme Court, you turn off the left who want you to pack the Supreme Court, and some centrists, to be fair. Um, but on another hand, if you say we are going to pack the Supreme Court, you may fire up your own base, but also fire up the Republican base. And I think they're already fired up because they want to see Amy Coney Barrett uh, confirmed. But, uh, you know, if you keep your cards close to your chest in this instance, I think that you might end up being better off. I don't think that they're going to pack the court. I uh, am hoping so, but I'm not getting my hopes too high. I'm not going to hold my breath. Um, but I mean, when it comes to this issue in general, Mike Pence, he argues from a position and assumes that everyone is a right winger. Like he called out Kamala Harris because... Brett Kavanaugh was apparently treated so poorly. He was credibly accused of rape. Second of all, the reason why she was questioning whether or not his religiosity was a factor in his uh, judicial interpretation is because Knights of Columbus, the organization with which he is a part of, is a homophobic, an openly homophobic organization. So if that influences him and the way that he interprets the Constitution, I think that that's something that you have to try to figure out. In fact, I'd argue it's Kamala's responsibility being on the Senate Judiciary Committee to figure out whether or not this individual will be biased against a portion of the population. So Mike Pence, you know, he makes this argument not acknowledging that the overwhelming majority of Americans now support marriage equality, right? And they don't believe that someone's religiosity is going to justify, you know, bigotry against a portion of the population. But he just, like, he assumes that everyone's conservative and he argues passionately from that point and he kind of, like, ropes people in into uh, accepting this notion that most people are right-wingers when in actuality, just because the Overton window is so far to the right, that doesn't mean that most Americans are conservative. Even if they self-identify as conservative, they support progressive policies. Look at the Green New Deal, Medicare for All raising the minimum wage. Americans are with us, not the right. So I think that, you know, going forward, Democrats need to acknowledge this, this and, you know, play offense more and not let Republicans, you know, uh, back them into defending themselves when they're the ones who should be speaking up for their records. But I mean, look, at the end of the day, I don't want to spend too much time on this debate because I don't think it's going to change the trajectory of this race. I think that Kamala Harris won for two reasons. First and foremost, I think her performance was uh, was excellent, right? It wasn't perfect. It was probably A-. It wasn't an A+, but still it was really good. 
And uh, second of all, the reason why I think she won is because Mike Pence, I mean, the expectations were really high. He needed a blowout performance in order to even start to change the trajectory of this election in him and Donald Trump's favor. And he didn't do that. He failed. He couldn't adequately defend himself, which is what Americans are most concerned with right now. Why COVID-19 is ravaging the country and why isn't this administration doing more? And he didn't uh, answer for that. And because of that, I think that Kamala Harris ultimately won. Uh, but I don't think this is going to lead to a boost for Joe Biden because it wasn't as striking. You know, when, when you watch that first presidential debate, like the takeaway is you just feel gross, right? Like you almost have this visceral reaction seeing Donald Trump so unhinged and argumentative and just constantly talking over Joe Biden at that debate. But in this debate, it was relatively normal. So, you know, I don't think it's going to further galvanize either side, but I don't think it's, you know, uh, going to necessarily help at all when it comes to saving the Titanic that is, you know, the Trump 2020 campaign. So they're losing time. They've got to turn this around quick. And this debate did not help them with that. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man. man.